As a new believer, coming to Christ in my 30s and starting to go to church on the weekends, I was stunned that the vast majority of working Christians separate faith and work. Most of us go to church on Sunday and work on Monday. I was stunned and confused by why that was happening. So I decided to do a research study. I spent a couple years interviewing hundreds of everyday working Christians. What was really interesting as I did this research study was I started to understand why, why it is that so many of us don't integrate faith and work. And it's because there are five overarching struggles that we have to confront if we're going to become faith active at work. The first thing that so many of us struggle with is sacred versus secular. Will we view work as one part of an integrated life of faith, or do we see work as a separate space where God isn't present? We have to believe in sacred over secular to accept the premise that work is a form of worship. In the Old Testament, there's a word that's used called avodah. It means work and worship interchangeably. For the Jewish people and for the early Christian church, there was no separation. Work was simply another form of worship. This is where we have to start. If we can overcome this struggle and view work as a form of worship, then all the other things I want to share with you make a lot more sense. The second struggle which comes out of all this is the struggle of calling versus career. Some of you may have heard that word vocation. There's actually a root word in there which is vocare which means a call of God for work. This was the original intent of a call, that when we would become adults, we would go to work on something that God had created us to do with our lives at work. And yet for most of us, we think today a vocation is interchangeable with a career. And so we struggle with the idea that calling could be different from career. But biblically speaking, we need to believe what scripture tells us, that we were created on purpose, that God has prepared good works in advance for us to do, and that as we work on them, He's working alongside us. This becomes the second struggle, calling versus career, and the solution is to identify God's purpose for our work lives. The third struggle is righteousness versus compromise. Will we uphold God's standards of conduct at work, or will we succumb to the standards of the work world? All you have to do is, is go into the news any given day and the headlines are filled with all kinds of compromises. You know, people who cheated on their taxes or somebody who's found some devious way to take money from people when they shouldn't have. It's just the stories go on forever. But this is a huge opportunity for us as Christians to set a higher bar and the way to do that is the solution of applying principles biblically while we work. The hard truth here is that most Christians don't understand biblical principles, especially in the context of work. But if we can become more fluent in these and we begin to apply them in our work, it can make a huge difference in the way that the marketplace works for everybody. The fourth struggle is the struggle of growth versus stagnation. Will we view work as a critical arena for spiritual formation or just a place to get a paycheck? So many times, we think of spiritual development as something that happens on the weekends in a local church, maybe with a small group or a Bible study or something like that. But if we step back and think about it, we spend, most of us, most of our waking hours at work and with all kinds of different people. So it's this enormous opportunity for us to come alongside them and to build into them. In, in spiritual language, what does it look like to help lead them toward the Lord or if they're Christians to grow them in Christ in and through the everyday work that we're already doing? The fifth struggle is stewardship versus ownership. Will we view the resources of the work world as belonging to God for his purposes or belonging to us for ours? This is such a big one because the marketplace places so much emphasis on ownership, private property. I'm reminded of that every April when I pay taxes for a corporation that I lead, right? Because I own it. But biblically speaking, I don't and we don't. God has given us work and we are to steward our choices at work and we're to steward the resources that we're given at work. And we work in communities that have all kinds of pressing needs and often the peace and prosperity of the cities where we work and where we live are dependent on the generosity of stewarding the resources in the places where we work every day. 
So that's our solution here. It's to extend prosperity from a working world to a hurting world.